hello and welcome to the channel so today i'm talking about fear of god versus fear of sinning against god you see fear of god and fear of sinning against god are totally different and the need for we believers to understand this difference between these two areas as well so firstly i've been in areas where i'm going to be like as if i'm fearing god for what he can do to me let's say i'm like what if I go and drink and and in that drinking place God you know God just kills me there okay and that's because of I, I won't drink because of God says don't drink alcohol drink you understand me as well that's just an example of what this fear of God and fear of sin against God just just talks about okay so I'll, I'll trust God that this video is going to be a blessing to you as well so firstly if you are new to the channel please subscribe leave a like and let me have your thoughts on this video as well and please you can share this video to your friends as well now so what is fear of god you see fear of god is when you fear god for who he is you love him for his goodness you you have this respect this reverence for him for what he can do what he what he has done for you and for for his mighty and great great deeds okay let's check out the scriptures and now israel what the lord the god require of you but to fear the lord your god to walk in all his ways to love him to serve the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul so that's fear of god okay now what is now fear of sinning against god fear of sinning against, fear of sinning against god is when you have this this fear towards god because of the consequence of an action because of what because of what will happen next when do something to god like for now let's say you you want let's say okay uh, lost okay this is when you have this this fear towards god because of the consequence because of the kind of consequence of, it, of, it, of an action decision so you have this extreme carefulness this fear will be like that you don't you don't want to to, to partake in, in what will come next and usually very very negative as well what will come next after after what you do okay so for example you can have this fear that the what if let's say when you when you do something now my 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 need to help fire it my 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 make it to Let's see, let's, let's see, lose your salvation and life like that as well. So this fear makes you, so this fear makes you to be very, very, very careful, sensitive, and it makes you to have this this extreme carefulness that you are so, 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 so careful and you are so, you are so deeply about everything you do. So this is just the issue of fear of sinning against God. And you know, melancholics are actually very, very, very fearful by nature. So, so there's this tendency for them to be fearful in even even in meeting with God as well. So and in case you don't know, this channel is about the melancholic temperament as well. So please check my other check out my other videos on, on the melancholic temperament as well. I'll leave the link in the description box below. Okay. So they will see this fear and can use to limit us and cage us as well. So please let, don't let this fear to be the one that is leading your day-to-day activities as well. Because for example, now you may have this fear of maybe fornication now, and this will make you to be very very careful with sleeping with ladies as well. If you're a guy and trust me if you're not careful and if you are guided and led by this fear you will ultimately fall into that because you're going to make it to make some decisions that will be like wow why did you do this okay fear of god and fear of sin against god are totally different so and there's need for us to understand these differences as well let's check out deuteronomy 28 47 to 48 because you did not serve the lord your god with joyfulness and gladness of heart by reason of the abundance of all things therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the lord shall send against you in hunger and thirst nakedness and want of all things you will put a yoke of iron upon your neck until i destroyed you this was god talking to the israelites when they didn't serve him out of love joyfulness and gladness of heart because you know god told them in the book of Deuteronomy 10 verse 12 to, to fear him, to love him and walk in his ways. But these guys actually serve him out of the fear and not out of the love. So this applies to us Christians as well that if you don't serve God out of love and joyfulness and gladness of heart, I'm afraid that's just hypocrisy. Yes, yeah, so what do I know the difference between fear of God and fear of sin against God? Number one, freedom. So you can be free. 2 Timothy 1 verse 17 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 
For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of lo- power, love, and self-control. You see, by those spirits up, you have dominion over sin, as I will come to us in the book of Romans 6, verse 22. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Romans 8, verse 2. Yeah. So fear of God and fear of sin against God are totally different. And by this spirit of you have total dominion over sin. I think sin no longer controls you, control your emotions, control your actions, but this spirit now leads you and guides you. Secondly, so you can offer a right, acceptable worship to God. That is how you can live a life that that pleases God genuinely, not achingly, not you hiding something from God, but a life where it's total sacrifice. A life of total sacrifice to God, of, of total worship to God. Now, Israel, what the Lord your God require of you, but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, to love Him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. In that scripture, God showed the Israelites His fearful side, His side that is like the full of all these great and mighty, shall I say, terrible parts of Him as well. Because these guys were very, very stubborn, they were stiff necked, they were very, very stubborn. Today they will serve God, the next day they will go and serve that God. So they were so much in and out of God. And God actually, God actually them this out of him that, look, I can do this if you don't worship me, if you, if you are, if you are against me, I can do this for you as well. God showed them this part of him as well. But, so from Psalm 119 verse 18, it, it says that, Open my eyes, I may see the wondrous deeds out of thy love. See, that wondrous deed is actually Jesus Christ, and that's so amazing because Jesus Himself is love, and God actually, by His grace and His mercy, from as we know from John for John 3:16, He actually showed us of this generation that is His loving side, that side that is that is full of love and care, and this so much goodness, and that's one thing that we should also know that God is love. So God is not this is not always this person that you know that. Just kills with thunder and does all these great amazing things, but he is loving. He has this loving side that we we seek and we will see if we seek him in that part, we're going to experience his goodness and mercy. So meaning that love is key, that love is that key. Love is the main thing in our sacrifice in our worship to God, sacrifice everything, just love is just the main point as well. So so if you really love God, you won't want to sin against you won't break his heart like that. You won't do what to make him angry at you. Okay, so please, if you have this love for God genuinely, trust me, you won't have issue with dealing with God as well. Because when Jesus came to the earth in for Ma- Matthew 22, 36 to 38, teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. Give us his love as his greatest commandment that his love is the first and greatest commandment ever we should love him then love our neighbors and now just what to the point now now in my country now most people are like they want a god-fearing guy god-fearing lady as well and that's what most people desire and, and that's fine as well but have we ever thought for a fact that what we want a god-loving person you know when you love god you won't have trouble with loving that as well you won't have issue with it is things that most people experience as, as like that. Because when you are when you love God, you truly find it easy to love your neighbor and everyone as well. So please make the an aim. Make it your like what said in in First Corinthians that make love your aim. Like your first aim should be love for God as well and love for others. Because when you love God, you love yourself, you love others, you love yourself. You have joy indeed. But disclaimer here, please. This does not give us the grace to start sinning. If you see him, because of God is so loving, I cannot start walking in sin, doing what he doesn't like. No, no, no. Know that grace abounds when there is when you start sinning, okay? When you don't start him, trust me, there won't be grace, okay? But then, are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means, how can we who died to sin live in it? So I'm going to share you some 
so I'm going to share you some some pictures some yeah some pictures so I'll share some pictures about love law as in general so please check them out I'll leave the link in the description below so please check it out as well and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and please if you have any video requests tell me as well and I'll be glad to make a video for you as well thank you for watching remain ever blessed bye